Hi, good morning everyone. I am Nicole Testa Boston, the Deputy Director of the FIATEC Consortium. And on behalf of all of us at FIATEC, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for what marks our 83rd live webinar. We have an exciting hour set aside to discuss Theometric Success a Digital Measurement and Layout Applied to the David H. Cook Theater at Lincoln Center and for which they were recognized in March with a SETI Award in the Real-Time Project and Facility Management Coordination and Controls category uh, for this achievement. And with that, I wanted to go ahead and um, welcome and thank um, Vincent Frasca, who is the Vice President of Product Development at Theometrics, for joining us uh, today and sharing with us your case study. So with that, Vincent, I will turn it over to you. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I haven't done a webinar this big before, so uh, here we go. I'll try to fill as much of the time as I can. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of time for questions. I'm going to show um, a couple of slides um, for PowerPoint, and then I'm going to jump right to AutoCAD and show you um, the deliverables uh, from this project and from a few others. Um, I'm going to start out um, the company is Theometrics. I, I started with the company uh, four years ago, and it wasn't a company. Uh, the, the owner approached me and said that he wanted to make a system that uh, was like GPS for his uh, electricians. Uh, so they could uh, touch a point on the CAD drawing and something, something somehow would show them how to uh, get to that spot in real life. Uh, and so uh, that's what we made. Um, we um, took some survey gear and we altered it. Um, uh, there's a control here. Here we go. Uh, and what we made the product for was specifically for um, for the trades to both uh, measure rapidly and uh, lay out their work directly from their CAD documents, uh, whether it's an architect's construction drawing or a shop drawing or an engineering drawing. You can open it up in AutoCAD, uh, which is unique to our particular system, select any coordinate, and the instrument will point right to the spot or uh, navigate you there with a prism. And so you can see um, this slide uh, represents the motivation for a product like ours. Um, uh, on, on the left side, you see um, most organizations involved in, in um, design and construction are uh, they're, they're empowered by technology, computers, CAD, now building information modeling. But on the construction team side, uh, the trade actual tradesmen, they, they use uh, somewhat outdated tools, strings, tape measures, blueprints, pencils, and it's a very manual process. So our, our product is really a, um, a, uh, a, a tool for the trades. Uh, we, we operate a, a, a service business in Manhattan. Pretty, we've pretty much gone all over the country, but um, uh, this RC donor work is us providing services to um, a, a GC or CM, as an example. Um, so here, 6,000 years ago, they used strings to lay out the pyramids, and uh, that's still the way it's done today. This, this is a project from recent history, uh, about two years ago. Um, you can see this string on the screen all the trades are required to really set up their own stream. Once the surveyor is on the site, uh, they set up the, the reference X, Y, and Z, a benchmark elevation. But um, the carpenter, the plumber, the electrician, concrete guys are pretty much left, at least in Manhattan, uh, to their own devices to set up a string and measure off of that uh, to, to triangulate um, their, their construction work and lay it out. And so uh, enter a system like ours, a digital measurement and layout system. Um, this is a little romantic view of uh, the future of our device, but um, what, we're, what we're showing here is uh, what's possible is layout directly from the CAD documents. Um, we bring a full PC to the field, whether that's a tablet or a laptop. Um, we're working directly in the full version of AutoCAD, um, which is a value because you can insert and align any drawings on the fly, uh, which, is, which is really uh, a great thing. What you see in the background here is some work that we've done. Uh, and typical of some of the layout work that we do. Um, it's, it, this is a hybrid reflected ceiling plan. You see um, reflected ceiling lighting, sprinkler positions, camera positions. Uh, there's, there's return HVAC laid out, some partition walls, very, very few in this, in this retail space. But um, what our process, uh, and there's a, I'm, I'm leading to somewhere here. I'm not just telling you about what we do. Um, our, our process is we measure, we measure a, a rapid perimeter, uh, including the column footprint. Um, we'll insert and align their proposed layout drawing, um, and at that point we can accommodate for the bust. Um, you know that's what carpenters call it. It's the difference between the actual space and the proposed design. 
uh, and this is work that we did at Lincoln. And this is um, th that that practice is what we applied at Lincoln Center. Um, uh, I'm sure you, if you've looked at our website, you've, you've, you've caught a glimpse of um, you've caught a glimpse of this. What this is is kind of um, where we're trying to go with um, with our system, which is uh, to control some robotic devices to uh, execute certain construction tasks. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, so these are the digital measurement and layout practices. Uh, the, these we think are um, that they're the same whether you're point cloud scanning, whether you're using a system like ours. Um, you can do these things now, uh, and the construction site can benefit from them. And uh, we, and what did we do at Lincoln Center? Well, we did as-built study in both 2D and 3D. We did deviation study or clash detection. This is that comparison of the actual to the proposed. Uh, we did construction layout or we assisted construction layout uh, on the job. Forensics we didn't get so much into. This is really when something has gone wrong. Uh, and then this dimensional quality control and risk mitigation, this is really the service we provided at Lincoln Center. What we did is we provided um, all of these services on demand uh, to all the trades. And, uh, uh, and what I wanted to show you with this real quickly was um, these, these, these practices uh, fall across the entire construction cycle. If you look here across the top, uh, uh, there's a pre-design phase, a design phase. Uh, of course, part of this is a coordination phase. Um, there's construction, and then there's post-construction. So um, uh, an as-built study, again, whether it's our system or any other digital measurement tool, um, really applies to the pre-design phase and the design phase. Um, uh, as-built and class detection, of course, throughout the design and construction phase, whether it's new construction or renovation. Um, construction layout, of course, encompasses uh, the entire construction phase, and then forensics sort of uh, picks up where something goes wrong. And uh, down here, it's getting to, uh, we, we call it, our flavor of it's architectural navigation, but um, this whole process makes uh, construction green. It makes it, uh, it really can make uh, construction uh, sustainable, uh, get it more to the sustainable side, to turn uh, sustainable design into uh, sustainable construction. And so uh, David H. Koch Theater, um, it was an interior renovation job. Uh, we started this, I believe, at the beginning of last fall. Um, it was approximately a $100 million project overall. I mean, that wasn't our part of it, but, uh, but it, was a, it was a huge uh, effort there. Um, there, there, were, there were really no as-built drawings of the space. Um, the space was occupied in that um, they had a full performance schedule that couldn't be interrupted. And so um, uh, we um, were hired by RC Dolner. Um, uh, we implemented a new electronic precision measurement and layout standard of dimensional quality control and risk mitigation. You know what that is now. I'm going to show you examples of it. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you examples right now. Um, and, and these are um, how it kind of lines up to the uh, Biotech Roadmap, our, our system. So this is, uh, th this is just an, an image, but I'm, I'm going to show you the actual CAD of this. This is the composite theater drawing, uh, or as built. Here is um, the ceiling plan. In this image up on the left, you can see um, this is what we measured. And uh, we did that because they needed to position new lighting, and I'll, and I'll show you that. Um, here is the, these are the aisles. Um, there was a, a change to the aisles where they had to put penetrations in, and they needed to put them into specific depths. And so we, um, the, the aisles dipped down across the span, and uh, so we as built that and provided that information. Also, uh, there are these beams that they couldn't interfere with in placing their penetrations, and that was below the floor. So uh, we measured below the floor, we measured above the floor um, in 3D, and uh, then we aligned their proposed uh, penetration layout to see where there was conflict, and then we laid out the penetrations. And so I'll show you that too in CAD. Um, this is the elevator for the performance stage. And um, I believe it's one of the largest elevators for a performance stage. And what we did first is we, in this lower area, you can see a uh, topographic measure of the floor surface. And uh, they utilized that to um, aid the installation of the mechanical systems, which you see here. And all of this is measured in 3D. And uh, that's my slideshow. I'm going to jump over to CAD. OK. Um, so. Uh, I had mentioned that there were these different practices, and I'm just going to show you a sample 
quickly of what the difference is. So a, a 2D as-built study um, you have here. This is a 2D as-built study. Um, we, uh, also what you see here, this, this is the tool set that the um, construction worker is using uh, on the site. Um, the, these first two items are for triangulation, and then these two items are for uh, either creating a drawing or laying out work. It, it, it's pretty simple. The, the buttons are so large because um, you can operate it with your fingers. Uh, you, you don't need a keyboard. Um, and, and you don't need any CAD knowledge. But, um, so what you see in the background here, this is a 2D measure. Um, it's a, it's a, a approximately 7,300, it's exactly 7,316 square feet. Um, we set up the gear, uh, we move to two positions, and we measure the perimeter um, accurately in an, in an hour, an hour and a half. Um, we also captured the column footprints. And you can see um, the columns aren't, on the, aren't aligned, and they're not the same size or shape. Uh, granted, these are fitted out with, um, with uh, sheetrock and such, but um, the, the, you know, uh, most construction drawings say measure off the uh, column center line. Well, which column center line is typically the question the carpenter has or the electrician has. So um, our system sort of deletes that, that problem. So this is a 2D study. Um, this drawing um, is a 3D measurement of a space. Uh, and what you can see in this, in this data is, uh, this is an atrium. It's pretty large. You can see these are, this is a stair landing coming down. Um, and what the, what the customer in this case needed, it was a curtain wall contractor, they needed an edge of slab study. And so um, that's what we did, is we went out to site, and in, um, I believe it was two days because of the condition on the site, but um, we measured the edge of slab. They took this data, and they went back and engineered their um, structure so that when, it got, when, the, when the components got to site, it would fit. Um, so that's a 3D, that's a 3D measure. It's not, it's not a perfect circle. Um, it's limited information. Um, and that really is the beauty of the system. You don't have to measure everything. Uh, only what you need to uh, understand the geometry of. 2D study, 3D study. Here's a, um, here's a deviation study. And I show this example because it's so easy to see. Um, this is a 2D perimeter measure. We saw, I showed you that, uh, 2D measure. But it's aligned to the architect's design. And so what you can see here, um, as you zoom in, um, you can see the, the, the colored line work is our measure. And the, this grayed out the box is where the um, design drawing says the column should be. The reality is, is um, not all the columns are aligned. Some of them are excellent. This one is great. Um, in most circumstances, it doesn't matter. But in some circumstances, it does. You can see here um, the misplacement of this column or the actual position of this column versus the design affects the partition wall for this uh, front desk. Uh, we can see here's a column that's not even in the correct spot and so on. Again, this column will affect this partition wall. And so um, oftentimes the, every trade is measuring up front before they start work to figure out the difference between the actual space they're dealing with and the proposed design. Well, this is the first time uh, with a system, a system like ours, a digital measurement and layout system makes it possible for them to have a global understanding rapidly of uh, the delta between the actual um, space and the proposed design or the construction drawings. So that is a deviation study or a clash detection. Um, and uh, moving right along, here is uh, oh, one more. We'll go back. Okay, what this is, it's um, it looks kind of silly, but what it is is uh is really pretty great, at least for, uh, that I've de dealt with people in the field. Um, we, you can see we took a measurement on a, um, in, in this case, a little bit of a random grid. Um, and then what we did is we applied this um, routine where you can specify um, a tolerance. The gray is within tolerance. In this case, it's plus or minus a quarter inch. Uh, this is a finished slab topo. Uh, the red is negative a quarter inch or greater, and the green is positive a quarter inch or greater. So what this allows is um, uh, our system is really geared at delivering actionable information and so uh, and, and rapidly. And so what this is is a rapid visualization tool. Uh, you, you can look at this. You know where the floor is high and low. If you're dealing with a door box, that's a value. If you're dealing with a, a high-end floor finish, again, uh, it, it benefits you. Uh, and here is um, getting to Lincoln Center. So this is a, um, 
this is a, a full model of everything that we measured in the space, or at least selected elements to, to make this, uh, this pretty deliverable. But it is, a 3D, it is the 3D data from, from the field. I'm just going to jump to my rotation here. You can see um, I use this for presentation purposes. Here's the elevator pit for the stage. You can see the mechanical systems there. Um, you can see the, um, the, the theater rises up. Uh, you can see these uh, entryway doors. Let me jump back here. Escape. Um, and and there, there's a top view. Uh, it's 100% it's scale information. And, and I'm going to go to the actual um, files, some of them from the field here. Here we go. So what you see here is an above ceiling measure of um, HVAC, um, some beams, and some steel structure. And uh, what they needed to do was uh, install some new lighting fixtures and make uh, both making penetrations for them in the existing ceiling and also uh, uh, fastening them to the structure above, which is a different drawing I'll, I'll show you in a moment. But what you can see here, I'm in the model space. The deliverable isn't much different. Uh, the deliverable is really a 2D view of it. But the model is a 3D model. Uh, we measured above the ceiling. Um, we measured from a catwalk. So you can see um, the ductwork, its position and location. You can see um, uh, where the ductwork impacts the ceiling. And R.C. Dolmer used this information to coordinate their penetrations. Here is, um, again, the model space. I'll, I'll snap to the deliverables. Um, I should have gone to the other scene and then we'll jump back to it. Uh, here's um, here's the, um, the, t the topographic measure of the slab that, that is the uh, pit floor. Uh, you can see that the elevations are related to um, a zero that we were told to hold. Uh, with a, our system or pretty much any digital measurement system, you can um, specify a specific location to hold a zero. You can um, uh, capture a surveyor's benchmark elevation and establish zero based on that, or you can um, just uh, take an average measure of an area and say that that, that that equals zero. So in this case, I believe that we used a, um, uh, a specific location that we were told to hold on. It was probably an elevator saddle. Um, so you can see that this, these pit numbers are all uh, negative 12 feet for starters. And uh, of course, we applied the top all mesh. And they use this information to install the um, the, uh, the mechanical system, which you can see here. And this is uh, again machinery to elevate the stage. And back to the model. You can see here's uh, this. This is the working document from the field. So the machinery is reported directly over you know where we did our topographic measure. Also, uh, if you notice, all of the line work is colored. Um, as you measure, it propagates to different layers. So you can turn on and off pretty much any element, including the um, elevations. Here is, uh, OK. So here you can see these circles represent penetrations that need to be made in the floor. Um, this, this floor is not a, a flat surface. So it's, it's, it's higher on both ends than it is in the, it's higher on both ends than it is in the center. And also you can see that these dotted lines moving across our beams. These are below the floor. And so what we did is we measured, uh, I'm going to go to the model space now. This again is the document from the field. Uh, we measured the so it's a little confused. Okay, we measured above above the um, theater floor, 
and we measured below the theater floor to capture the to capture the position of the beams. And then we inserted and aligned uh, this proposed penet these uh, the penetration drawing, so that they could determine. Um, I'm not sure the success of that 3D zoom for you guys. But they could determine um, where they could make penetrations, and so they shifted them around and uh, and and we laid them out. Uh, we selected each from the drawing, and you know, the instrument took us there. Uh, so that that is a is one example of how we applied the system um, for both um, measurement as built, uh, deviation study, and layout. Here too is uh, I don't, okay. So this is um, if you, see, you can see here, this is where a chandelier had to go, and these are some penetrations that had to be added to the ceiling. But this green line work is uh, on the next presentation. I'm going to go to the model space. You can see this green line work is the um, the, ceil the ceiling trusses above the ceiling. Um, Whereas this this line work is the um, is the ceiling design below the ceiling. So we measured below the ceiling and above the ceiling, um, and and I'll show you in 3D. Although it's kind of shallow, but here we go. Escape. I'll do it again. So once we measured the position of the trusses. And we measured below the ceiling this, this ornate ceiling design. We then inserted and aligned the required location for um, for the um, proposed light fixtures, and we determined uh, where they could make penetrations such that they could fasten the chandelier to um, uh, a ceiling truss, uh, such that they wouldn't impede any uh, or, or hit any uh, metal structure above the ceiling. And again, I don't think this would be uh, you help you very much, but uh, zooming back in here. Um, so <clears throat> with the measure above and below, you could rapidly determine where you, uh, once you aligned your proposed design, where in fact you could place those, uh, such that they wouldn't fall on the seam of the design, uh, and they would fall in open space, uh, and that's what, uh, that was the purpose of these. And then uh, here, where they could place the ceiling chandelier accurately, and uh, and be able to fasten directly to the ceiling truss. And of course, we laid out this work as well. And that, um, that is uh, the work we did at Lincoln Center, uh, as built study, deviation study, and, uh, and layout on demand. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm not sure how much time I used up, but uh, it didn't feel like an hour. It was only 30 minutes, Vincent. <laughs> so we've got, we definitely have time for um, any questions or clarifications or further points people would like. Um, I have one, uh, Vincent. Um, is there any more information or details you can provide around um, how you're using robotics? At the beginning of the presentation, you had said that you're exploring work with that. Uh, well, um, in several ways. If the first is, is um, the device we use is referred to as a fully robotic um, tooling station. We call it a master station. Um, so it, in fact, is robot in that it moves in the horizontal and vertical. Uh, it's a survey instrument. Um, on the other side, with these autonomous devices, they're not fully autonomous. But um, what we're doing is uh, a little bit of a departure for robotics. Uh, it certainly is a departure for construction. Um, ro robots have been in manufacturing for years and years. Um, but they're not on the construction site yet. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, you know, if you go to a, a manufacturing plant, you can't enter the working envelope of a, of a, a robotic arm. There's a cage around it. Um, but you need to sort of work around our devices. Also, um, uh, we're generating a program for the, for the device on the fly, um, which we're doing successfully in the office, although we haven't applied it to, cons to you know, some real jobs to say only in experiments. Um, but what we're attempting to do is um, you've got this um, digital document that someone spent so much time developing, and uh, this is really the point of a whole system, is um, to, to print a piece of paper and give it to someone to lay out with a tape measure is kind of asinine, especially if, you, uh, if, if you're modeling it in 3D with a finite accuracy. So our goal is to make systems that um, 
transfer the accuracy of the design to the field. And this, this autonomous robot is one example of that in that, um, in that um, you select the elements in CAD that you, or the, the model that you want to um, execute in the field. In this case, in the background, you can see it's laying out um, electrical, it's laying out partition walls. Um, and what we think there's no limit to what um, devices like this could do uh, in construction. Thank you. Um, has this been used on any horizontal projects like uh, transportation or roadway? Our, our system? Yes. Um, yes. Um, we've done quite a wide variety of work uh, in and around Manhattan. We've done some pro we've done some smaller projects for uh, the M both the MTA and the TA. Um, it was in our in our in my example it was mostly machine room uh, measurement, where we were measuring um, electrical cabinets and machinery cabinet positioning, such that they could in the office um, make a a quick decision on where to install a new device or could they install a new device. Um, another question: Does this uh, technology work with microstations? Um, we, we have imported our software directly for microstation. However, we have dealt with microstation documents, uh, VGNs. Um, in, in one example, you know, we learned the hard way that there are some scaling issues between uh, microstation uh, and, uh, and the version of AutoCAD we happened to be using at the time. And so um, we have taken VGNs to the field to do layout work. Um, did was this primarily driven by the owner, or was it the contractor? Um, was it you know was this a technology that was difficult to sell, or or did the stakeholders immediately see the value? Well, uh, there's a couple questions. The first is it uh, driven by the owner or by uh, the industry. Um, in this case, I have to say um, that Mr. Staff has really uh, envisioned the system. Um, he kind of knew what was available and knew it wouldn't do what he wanted it to do, and so he sort of set a guideline of what he wanted to achieve, and then we set about um, creating that. He, he really had uh, a, a pretty great idea, I think. Um, and, of course, he's worked in construction for over 30 years, so he's intimately familiar with the difficulties of actually doing the work and installing you know, the electrical and the, the carpentry uh, and, uh, and building a building, uh, especially high-rise. So, um, so that's sort of how it's come about. As far as adoption, um, what we've done is we made this system, we've rolled out a service business to, uh, to prove out that, you know, the trades can use a tool like this, uh, that they would use a tool like this, and that it provides value to the job, to the owners, pretty much all the organizations in, in, construction, in the construction food chain. Um, who adopts it? Well, it's, I can tell you from experience, as soon as a project manager uses it once, and like feels that benefit, experiences it, um, how rapid it is, and um, how it, how accurate it can be. Um, it, it's like really gets a feel for its utility. You know, we're called back again and again. Um, and uh, one one example is um, R.C. Dolmer. Um, you know, before the Lincoln Center is like uh, probably the fifth or sixth job we've done with them uh, as as theometrics. And we we're pretty much on all of their jobs now for, you know, minimum, you know, four to five days. Um, what an example is, is, you know, we just started another job where we're uh, dimensional quality control on a 15-story um, renovation. So, I mean, they use us for pretty much everything. Uh, think, another question. Does this, re does this require to model in true coordination, or does it also work in relationship to control points? Um, okay, uh, that's a little confusing, but I think I can answer. Um, this is, uh, the system is, it's, it's, it's based on survey, some survey practice. We lean heavily, our system uh, does both um, uh, triangulation based on resection and triangulation uh, based on um, uh, <clears throat> uh, turning to a backside and traversing a line. We lean heavily on the triangulation mathematics. Um, what we do when we go to a site is we set up uh, our own control. We pepper the site with so, so many targets that um, 
if someone maliciously came by to try to erase them, there's no way they could get them all. And um, what the software does is, uh, as you as you proceed, it categorizes control points as one type of thing and uh, measurements as another type of thing. So you don't have to, if, uh, for example, uh, long answer, but I'll get to it. Uh, we've done we've done um, <clears throat> as built studies where we're in the tens of thousands of measurements, you know, six, seven thousand. 15,000 points, um, we <clears throat> need to rapidly discern which are control points and which are, which are measurements. So what we do is um, the, <clears throat> the software automatically um, it, it categorizes the control alphanumerically, so a number and a letter, and it categorizes the measurements just numerically. So you don't have to search through 6,000 or 10,000 points to find your control. Um, also, you can label them with specific names. But uh, what you do is you set up uh, control. Once we capture that, we're good to go. Um, <clears throat> we can then proceed. We'll capture any survey reference that's available on site. Uh, once that's reported in, we can either start our as-built or insert and align drawings and start layout. The process of control really is, um, we try to keep it to, um, you know, 5, 10, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, if, if we're going back to the same site, uh, you know, you can get control in like two minutes, uh, a minute. It really is uh, just a procedure to follow. Thank you, Vincent. Um, someone wants to know, can you envision application of this system to a grassroots construction project? To a grassroots construction project. I'm not sure what a grassroots construction project is exactly, but um, I, I mean, I, um, I put a small addition on my house. I used it, I used it there. Um, so I think if you're asking about residential construction, I think absolutely you could use it in residential. I know you can. Yes, I think that I think that was the spirit of the question. Um, thank you. Uh, someone else wants to know: Does Theometrics sell the software or the services or both? Um, at the moment, we sell services in Manhattan. We're kind of moving towards making a version of the product available. Um, our concern is. Um, <clears throat> that people are trained properly to use it. Um, we're, we're kind of are, are fooling around with the idea of uh, leasing the whole kit to people or renting the whole kit to people uh, and providing training. Um, what we're interested in setting up a, uh, we think that, um, not our system, but uh, digital measurement and layout um, is a better means and method than tape measure and the blueprint and strip. And so what we're trying to do is establish a standard in that sort of area. And um, our concern is making certain that um, the equipment is calibrated properly, that uh, the best version of what we've got is out there, that um, people are trained, especially for like the more advanced things like, um, and do, like an example is um, laying out on a deck where there's rebar being assembled and uh, you know, materials flying overhead on a crane. Is, it's a pretty intense environment. And you, like while you can learn how to measure anything in, you know, five to ten minutes with our system, um, and you can learn how to lay out in just as much time, learning how to do it in that sort of environment, is, I mean, there's there's training required, and so um, we're we're not really sure what our course is yet, but we're, we're rapidly finding it. All right. Um... Vincent, there are some people that would like to follow up with you on specifics of this. Could you provide your email and phone number so they can contact you directly following the webinar? I sure can. Uh, I sure can. That's not a problem at all. You, you want me to give it now or, or after? Yes, please. So that they can take it down right now and, and contact you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my, my direct line is, um, is uh, area code 973-219. 9760, and uh, my email address is uh, Vincent, uh, spelled V-I-N-C-E-N-T. Oh, there's my name right up on the screen. Uh, Frasca, F-R-A-S-C-A, no dot or space, at theometrics.com. Great. And if any of you um, didn't catch that and you want to just send me an email, ntboston at fiatech.org, I will also make that connection for you. Um, and I, I just wanted to reiterate for those who might have joined late, we are recording the webinar and the audio and the slides, and we'll have it posted in our media library later this week. So um, with that, I think, Vincent, there are a few other questions, but they're more detailed, and they'd like to follow up with you um, individually about the robotics and, and um, 
building facilities from scratch. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up the um, hour that turned out to be 45 minutes or 40 minutes. I want to thank all of you for spending it with us. And um, thanks, a big thanks to Vincent for sharing your story with us. And I hope you'll all be able to join us next week for a presentation by Aconex on driving construction project success with trust-based collaboration. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.